How would I sum up an SK? Transcendent. Welcome to the making of Tararua SK, where we're going to uh, take you behind the scenes uh, of our award-winning adventure documentary. I'm Andy. I'm the filmmaker, cameraman, narrator, distributor, uh, and orange boy. And I'm Hans, filmmaker, cameraman, film coach, and editor. Together, we'll break down the highs, the lows, and all the wild moments that went into creating Tararua SK. So, because so at this point, you've got the you've got all your interviews, which you did mostly late twenty twenty two, early twenty twenty three. Mm. Did I had around six interviews, maybe something like that. Yeah, you have you've got the archival footage from the SK Awards evenings. And then you've got the, and then you've got all the old GoPro footage, and then you've got your new adventure you've been. So by this point, February or whatever it was, mm. you've got all the elements that need to go into the film. I don't think what we really talked so much at the moment about is the interviews that you did with mm. Dave and Gary, and all the names, of course, are just going to escape my mind at this moment. Yeah. But that was a new thing for you to do, sit down and interview people, and that was part yeah. of the process of making this film, as you learning how to interview and. Get the, and because the interviews you did were people spoke very sincerely and, and they really helped to tell the story. Yeah, so I had experimented one, maybe once or twice just since doing some of the courses on doing some interviews. But yeah, this was the first time I'd done the proper interviews and and it was amazing having having you there to film and do the sound properly but yeah the, the interviews were a real highlight of the process sitting down and chatting with people about stuff that they love is it's so cool and you get to have conversations with people that you wouldn't have otherwise yeah it was amazing to i mean our first interview session we had we had chris tim and and olivia and yeah, like that, doing that really created a whole lot of momentum for for the film. And then finding finding Dave Kappa, who was, you know, him and Bruce Jeffries were the first to successfully complete the weekend challenge. And and Dave was was open to being involved and being interviewed, which was a real it was was just really important for the film. I've had lots of feedback that Dave Kappa's interview is just one of the one of the real highlights of the film. And you and I went over to his house in in Carterton and had an amazing couple of hours there. It was a really special. And then and Sir Graham Dingle and I like I was a bit scared really of asking Graham whether he would whether he'd want to be involved or not. And but yeah, eventually I got a bit of encouragement from a few people to reach out to him and, and that was amazing. It was great to get his perspective. And then interviewing Jean, Jean Beaumont. Jean was just you know, was amazing. Mm, that yeah, was yeah. she was yeah. That was really very special. Gary Goldsworthy, he had some great, some great nuggets to share. And it was really fun doing the interview with Tim, Joe and I after we'd done the film trip. Because the film trip was, it was a, a really, it's a really amazing thing to share with, to share with others. That was the first time that I'd done a trip with Tim and First time I'd done a, a trip with Joe, and and I've done one subsequent trip with with Joe, and yeah, it's just it's a it's very special to go and share an adventure like that, and with the film trip we were trying to capture something, we we're trying to make something about something that we all love, it was yeah, it was a very nice experience.
It was fantastic because it really added to the, you, you were creating the story as you were going along for this documentary, <laughs> which was fantastic because it was, it was beautiful, but beautiful to show that actual adventure mm. going on in the background, or lead, leading the story. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, what, yeah. So what point did you, so there was a, you had the opportunity to send this, to submit this film for the Mountain Film Festival. Yeah. Yeah. And... Was that something that you always were planning to do from the beginning? Yeah. 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 I mean, the Adventure Film School I mm. went to as part of the New Zealand Mountain Film Festival. Mm. Yeah, my my goal was to make a film to submit to the, the Mountain Film Festival. And the deadline for that was, I think it was the 20th of April. Yeah. 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 And so I was, yes, I was, I was, I was working towards that and everything was going okay until I started putting together my f first edit and I had these amazing sound bites from the interviews and we had some amazing footage, but yeah, my original kind of idea of how the story would be told just just didn't work so yeah what was that first edit what just what was it so you'd put together it, it was your first it was your first narrative it was your first go at making the film yeah so you know it's it's just a matter of getting something made isn't it yeah 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 so it was yeah it was about getting something getting a foundation mm. to to work from mm. and one of the things that I got taught at the Adventure Film School, and I, I know you reminded me of it, and, and I've had other reminders about it as well, was the first thing you've got to do is you've got to finalise your story. You've got to finalise that, that audio of your story before you start putting pictures to it. And I didn't really follow that strictly for my first for my first edit it was a mistake but it's one of those things yeah. because the films you'd been making prior to that were basically like your trips of your adventures we you'd, you'd edited together highlights package of your yeah. uh, of a particular adventure somewhere around new zealand and you'd you know live action narrated over it yeah and i think when you uh, having watched a few of those i felt like yeah okay we've got something here because you're you know the way you tell stories and your voice works quite well over the footage so there's something going on there so let, let's work on that. But um, so you, you talk, I think you did you take initially that's the sort of pro approach you, you were taking. Or did you have a narration at that point? No, I can't remember. Yeah. No, I don't think no. I. I don't think I had. No, because my plan was to use the interviews of Joe, Tim, and I mm. to to connect things together, but but that that didn't work and. Yeah, so I got a bit lost at that point. I didn't really know where to go, and you provide you're provide, providing some great input and some great guidance around cutting down the interviews, getting them themed into into different story parts, and I'd I'd wanted to go and talk to a friend of mine, Mark Elberston, who's a very very successful filmmaker but again I was a bit I was a bit kind of shy of going and asking him for help and yeah and also a little embarrassed about what I created so far yeah I just thought he would think it was just rubbish so yeah I finally plucked up the courage to go and have a conversation with him and he was and he was amazing so it was great to, he was like, okay, with a documentary like this, you absolutely have to have one narrator. You've got to have a consistent spine across this to have it work. And and there was a lot of other great input he gave me what was around like just really focusing on the story focusing on like the really interesting kind of dramatic things and the different angles you could take. Yeah, it was his input that kind of drove a lot of my narration ideas from there. 
things like the comparison about the the vertical climb being twice the same vertical climb as climbing Mount Everest twice from base camp. That was his his kind of input going, create comparisons, create some interest and in some things that people can cap, connect to. And in the same kind of vein that the SK earns calories, 15,000 of them, that's the same as 150 gels or 40 Big Macs. It was mm. kind of come thinking about those things and finding finding the little mm. stories, some of the little stories around the food about Danny Garrett consuming 40 gels and mm. getting the runs a couple of days later mm. and mm. and Sam leaving his famous wraps in the car and doing his SK mm. just on a few Mars bars and some gels. Mm. That input was super useful and what well, was amazing. And so that got me re-energized because mm. I felt like, I didn't know where to go. Mm. And then when I started working on that narration and working with you coaching me around that and with you coaching me on just how to work with the sound bites from the interviews to really trim them right back to what are the necessary words here in the sound bite. It doesn't matter if we move, if we snip out a whole bunch of these words that don't need to be there. Yeah. And Mark was the same. He was yeah. like, when you're pulling together those sound bites, he said, people don't necessarily speak the way that you want to have it come out. Edit it. Yeah. Take a word from here mm. and put it where it needs to be. Mm. You're telling the story. You mm. tell the story with the things that you've got. You don't have to use the whole sentence. No, no. You're still communicating the message in the story. Yeah. You're just making it easy for people to digest and, and propel the story forward. Yeah. 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 Mm. And and so that was a real that was a real eye opener. Mm. And it's incredible. I think going through and doing that and a lot of the coaching you gave me around that really helped me refine the narration to what are the words, like the smallest number of words that I can use to communicate the key thing here? And you talk to me a lot about finding that those that, that rhythm and cr being able to cr have the narration create the connection mm. to the next piece of the story. Yeah, you know, so I spent hours doing that, and, and a lot of time I. Uh, spent hours thinking about that and working on that while I was running or riding mm, or mm. out on adventures, mm. just running through it over and over again and going, okay, how could I refine this even more? Mm. Yeah, it was so important to be able to put yourself into the story and and use your narration as a way, as a glue to bring everything, you, all the components you've already got, you've got the story there. You had to, you, there had to be a way for the to make it relatable for an audience. Yeah. And and I think that yeah, when you, it was pretty obvious, <laughs> just with your passion for the adventure and your knowledge of the adventure and everything that that you knew about it, that you yeah, that that we realised that you had to be a character in the film mm. and that you were able to take people, the audience, on the adventure and make it relatable for the audience, Yeah, which is so important. Yeah, it was so great that you, you did that, and uh, which I don't think was easy for you to do. No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't easy. I felt very self-conscious mm. uh, and it felt very, yeah, very uncomfortable. But I would say... It's, Especially because you'd gone through the two failures mm. and then completing, and then getting the triumph of completing one. So I mean, it was yeah as uncomfortable as it was. You had to be in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It, you know, it, yeah. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the story it is without that. So yeah. So yeah. So that's so you. So where are we? We're in the yeah. So I guess so we've. So now we've got this deadline yeah. of the Mountain Film Festival deadline looming. Mm. And after 
I worked on this narration and I then, so I worked on the audio and I got my audio edit done to a point that I was happy that it had a good, strong story. So I then created a, so it was a, it was about that point that an email came out from the Mountain Film Festival. I was working on that final kind of narration. Well, as I was working on that, they sent out an email saying, if you're working, if you're working hard on something, we can potentially provide you an extended deadline for the finished copy. And so I I saw that and I was like, okay, wow, this could be a lifesaver to actually um, being able to submit something into the festival. And and so I yeah, I asked the question, could we could I get an extension on the deadline? And uh, Mark uh, from the festival said, yep, you can do that. We just need you to submit a rough cut by by late April and you can have until the end of May to finish it off. And so I worked on the I worked on the rough cut and so that was pretty much my narration and the audio done and then I put some of the amazing footage we had to that and submitted the rough cut. Now and at that point I then reached out to I mean, we were chatting all the time but I asked if you had some availability to to put some some good hours into it to really bring it up to a whole new level and yeah luckily for me you had a gap and you lucky for me too yeah <laughs> <laughs> that I got to do it yeah and yeah you started working away how was that for you yeah that was amazing i think it was so it was late april that you must have asked and it, and it had to be in by the 30th of may yeah so we had about five four four or five weeks um and yeah it was yeah i was totally up for the challenge of it and because i'd seen the footage and i'd been involved in filming interviews with you so i felt like i had a really great understanding of the story and we'd been working together chatting throughout the year up to this point anyway about the film so it was an absolute no-brainer to say yes and do that but wow that deadline okay it wasn't we had four or five weeks to just edit and edit and edit we had to really have it ready within two or three weeks by mid-april so we could by mid-may mm. so we could do the post other post-production like color grading or sound mixing and or just make sure that we've got a, a bit of extra time at the end to make changes or whatever Ever we need to do. So really, we, you and I worked on a plan to work back from that date and have some key dates in that we'd, we'd try and target. So, but yeah, that was probably one of the more, yeah, definitely one of the more intense. I, I've made a sort of a couple of shorter documentaries before, but they didn't have any deadlines on them. So to have that deadline for this was um, really forced us to get through, forced forced me forced me to get through those kind of. I, I st so you had your edit as it was, which is mm. the one that got into the film. So the narrative was really strong. The story was pretty much there. What we needed to do next was basically make it work in a more of a cinematic way, I guess you could say. So mm. we need a sort of a, a strong beginning. We needed a strong ending. And then we needed a way of taking your narration and the footage and the interviews and making it all work in kind of a we in kind of a way that you could feel pulled along on the story. It would work technically. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you had all the elements there. And I just had to go through and just start at the beginning and just um, not look at the task ahead. <laughs> just focus on this one minute section here, this one minute section here. And I just kept, I, I basically, what the first thing I did when you asked me to edit it was, I think you had all the interviews cut down already. Um, mm. But what I did is I went through all of that GoPro footage that you'd shown me the previous year. And I went through all of that and I basically was... I didn't want to leave a single stone unturned. <laughs> I wanted to see everything in the way that I edit, and I suppose is what, what people do, but I, I just to go through everything and just find everything and find all the, pick all the good shots out. So I went through every single clip, 
made cut downs of every clip and every adventure that you'd been on and uh, and just made sure that I knew what was there to use because I knew that at some point I was I was going to need to maybe call on this type of shot or this type of shot to express this bit of narration or express this part of the interview. I did that and I also did that with the January trip footage as well. I just methodically went through, did the same thing with that. And that's when we stumbled across, yeah, Tim's vlogs mm -hmm. and his stuff. And and I suggested to you, I pulled a few things out that Tim had said and I said, look, I think this bit here would go really well on the edit. Mm. So I would just throw them in the edit. We'd, we had a, a shareable project so we could see what was going on at the same time. And so, yeah, it was great to be able to work together in a relatively fast way. And I could say to you, hey, look, I've got up to the... I've got up to five minutes. Have a look at the first five minutes and see mm. what you think. And, and then again at the 10 or... 15 marks or whatever it was but but yeah yeah so finding those things from Tim really helped the story and but just going through everything and just organizing it in the fashion that I organizing it organized it in and then just building the story minute by minute and taking what taking your sound bites and and then making them work in a I guess what I but what I was able to do in this process was start starting to find a kind of a, a pace for the film Mm. a rhythm for the film and I started off with a we decided to start with a, a soundbite from Tim to open it now mm. I don't remember whether you had that in already him he said how you describe the the SK in one word I think it was the, was the yeah word. so in my yeah so in my rough cut no it didn't start with that yeah yeah and so it was how can we hook people into the story and so that first minute was about just hooking people in and and I made that bit of that montage, which actually evolved. We did a bit of a, I did a bit of a recut of, mm. of that down the track, but just because of that tight deadline we had, it wasn't we didn't have much time to to look back. <laughs> you get a minute together, and then you get onto the next minute. It wasn't so much going looking back and oh, how can we make that minute better? Mm. It's like, okay, that'll do for now. Yeah. So this process was really just yeah finding a pace, finding a natural rhythm. Okay, we're coming out of the soundbite into that bit of narration. We'll leave a gap here for some music, and then and then I think I as I was going, I was adding B roll as I was going as well. So I was going through and getting to getting to, getting a f few minutes into the audio edit, and then okay, now pulling from my cut downs and really thinking about the shots that are going to work here and playing around a little bit and experimenting with the shots that might work. Mm. But yeah, so just building a road. And but not looking back, basically, just there's a minute, there's a minute, and mm. keeping that deadline in mind. And that was fundamental having that deadline because if there hadn't been a deadline, I think the process of making it would have been a lot more drawn out, mm. and I wouldn't have been as taken my time a little bit more to, to to make it. But I think being under that pressure to really make it work in a short time frame, I think made it what it was. And yeah, so we yeah, yeah. so yeah. I think we were, I think you were probably 10 days into that process when I got the news that based on the rough cut, the film had been selected for the festival. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't realise that they were going to make the selection based on the rough cut. I thought they were going to wait until they got the final version mm. before they chose whether to select it or not. I was surprised, mm. super excited. They'd selected it based on the rough cut, which was really based on the, yeah, I guess the story and the fact that we had some beautiful shots in there. But the difference between the rough cut and the the and the beautiful, the beautiful film that that you created in the end was, you know, substantial and. I'm mean, like a massive step up. And then we got the, do you remember we had the, so we submitted the final oh, cut. yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then I got an email because my rough cut was 19 minutes. Right. And I think your final edit was 28 minutes, 29 minutes. And so the festival came back and said, look, I'm really sorry, we've done all the programming and scheduling based on 19 minutes. We need you to cut 10 minutes out of your final edit. Mm. After you've spent 
five <laughs> weeks laboring over every single just making it beautiful and we and and they said and we need it within three days <laughs> that was the final version and within three days wasn't it yeah so that was we at that point we'd yeah so i'd made i'd made the edit 29 minute edit yeah. okay we're gonna send this into the festival fantastic um, it's been accepted that's even more amazing yeah and then, sorry guys, you got to chop out ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a real, yeah, it was a real hat, head and hands moment for me. It was yeah. like you got to be good joking. Yeah. You know? But what could we do? Mm. That was what we had to do. I think. I think you took the. You were able to be a lot more brutal than I was at that point, mm. and uh, you chopped out the bits that you felt we could get rid of, mm. based on some. I think they gave a bit of advice themselves as well, mm. and so we ended up with a. A 19, 20 minute version? Oh, One. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They let, they gave us a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't watched that version again since then. But I think we kept, we had a version that worked. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I think, yeah. So, but it was, look, it was gutting to have to do that. But I wonder if it played an important part of the final edit because we made some important editorial choices as well at that point mm. with some things we wanted to chop out that I think remained out from memory. Because the final edit is 26 minutes, including credits, so... Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah most of that is is actually around the credits. So, mm. you know, there were a few things there. So, you know, like the... F um, so in the final edit kind of pre-credits, I think, you know, we've it, it's pretty much the same as your final edit. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, sure. there are a couple of little tweaks here and there yeah. that we made, but... Um, yeah, so that was um, so we overcame that uh, challenge, and we then had yeah. So the Mountain Film Festival. Yeah, you know, I went to Wanaka and with with my family, and yeah, that was amazing. Four hundred and twenty people in a packed theatre, massive screen, and yeah, or I got to do a little intro to the film and yeah such an exciting time to sit there and the, for the first time to sit there in a I had a couple of screenings with some family and friends just to to get some feedback and to get some final kind of tweaks but to sit there in an audience and have them react was yeah amazing and then a few days later we had the Wellington screening at the penthouse, and yeah, how, how was that night for you? Ah, yeah, that was incredible to be able to, yeah, to be able to, to sit in a cinema uh, and watch a film that you've um, played a part in making is, is always a real privilege, and to see it on the big screen, going off the small screen, <laughs> the little office with the little computer monitor, to seeing it actually how it's supposed to be seen, and that environment was with the audience and getting a feel of how the audience was enjoying it was really special mm. and such a great feeling after all that we'd been through to get to that point yeah it was really yeah it was fantastic mm. <laughs> yeah yeah you had Caspian there and yeah and to be able to yeah to have my son along to, to view it as well and he had to put up with me <laughs> with my long hours editing at home and he'd come in and have a look at bits of it as well and yeah so that was a lovely thing to be able to share and that was the be beginning of yeah many screenings that you were able to pull off too but the, yeah and that event was a fundraiser for the Graham Dingle Foundation too which I yeah. think you managed to raise about two, 2004 yeah 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 so mm. that was it was really nice the penthouse when I spoke to you know, when I spoke to them and about whether we could hire a theater or and do a screening. And he was like, how long's the short film? And I'm like, it's 20, I think at that stage, that version was 29 minutes, the, the full version that we had. And he said, okay, one of the things, I can provide you the theater for free. Because of because it's a short film, we can fit it in between our standard screenings. And the thing that we just ask is if you can encourage people to use the bar and restaurant, and then that would be great. And so I, I when when they came back with that, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it as a fundraiser. It'd be good to do that. And 
Sir, Sir Graham Dingle had, had kindly made himself available to be interviewed and was in, in the film and it has an incredible foundation that's focused on using the outdoors to help young people. It just seemed like a great idea and yeah, it was a really special night to have so many people from the SK community there and to have friends and family there to share that with. It was, yeah, it was cool. And um, you started to get a bit of feedback. How was the feedback from the the Mountain Film Festival? How was the feedback from the screening in Wellington? You could starting to get a sense that it was something that was resonating with people. Yeah, yeah. the The feedback from the Mountain Film Festival was was fantastic. People people loved it. There were lots of people asked what SK stands for. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> I made a film about the Tararua SK and haven't really explained what SK stands for. So that was, so I know we made a couple of little tweaks to make that a little clearer. And yeah, we got some great feedback from the Wellington event. And I'd created a little, a little IMDB listing for the film. And we started to get a couple of, a couple of reviews with, with some really nice feedback for the the adventure community, it was definitely connecting and inspiring them. Mm. And mm. there were lots of people who were who knew a lot about the SK who were like, "Wow, it's cool, really cool to see that brought to life and just the beauty of it." And there were also a lot of people who, well, there were people who were on the fringe who were finding out more about about the SK and and definitely had feedback from people that watched the film and have gone and done SKs and and I was doing a trip doing a tramping trip with my daughter and a friend and we were staying at one of the huts along the route and there was a, a couple that had seen the film and they were doing an SK partly inspired from watching the film, so it was, yeah, it was having the the impact that um, that we hoped that it would. So, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and so it, it was obvious that it was starting to resonate with the people in the community. And then I guess the next challenge was, can this be appreciated by a wider audience? Be sure to check out Tararoa SK at tararoask.com. Also screening on Apple TV. Prime Video and in New Zealand. Thanks for joining us. What's your next adventure? Boom. Done. <laughs>